Hello and welcome. Today I would like to take a look at Cheshire Cat AI. So let's run over to the desktop and get started here. Now, let me uh, make this a little bit bigger. Come on. Let me get this to be full screen. Here we go. It's giving me uh, it's giving me some problems as always. And what I want to do is I want to run over to Chester Cat AI. Let's go to their main page here. And here it is. And so I have a Mac Mini. So this is something that runs on the Mac. Uh, I want to show you one other thing here. If I run over to Olama AI, we can take a look here at their GitHub. And if we scroll down into the README towards the bottom here, we've got uh, community integrations. And I spent a lot of time looking through these integrations. And for my purposes with a Mac uh, and using Python, this makes the most sense. A lot of these are JavaScript and TypeScript, which I don't program in. So uh, and this one down here is Swift UI. So this one seemed to make the most sense. Uh, but not only did it make the most sense from the tools that I use, it also makes sense from what it does. It seems to be uh, very, uh, what's the word, full featured? Very full featured for a, uh, an artificial intelligence. And I won't call this a chatbot because it does a lot more than just chatting. So anyway, let's go back and take a look at this is the chessercat.ai website. And uh, you can take a, a look through here and so on and so forth. You see, you can even run it on, excuse me, on a Raspberry Pi. But what I'm interested in is running it with a llama. So if we go over here to the blog, and then we scroll down a bit. Here's the article on how to run a local model with Olama. So I think I have that open here already. Uh, where is it? All right, so I read this and I found it to be a bit confusing, uh, but it's, it's not really very difficult. Uh, so it seems that you can you can run this pretty quickly just by uh, uh, running a Docker container. I don't see where it shows that. Uh, however, there are some things that need to be done. So just starting up the Docker container, just pulling it and running it is not enough. You've got to do some things to it. So let's get started here. Uh, so it starts by showing you this setup file, and it's an incomplete file, and it's a completely useless. Uh, then down here, it shows you a complete file, and this one is helpful. So you're going to want to make a copy of this. But then what do you do with it? Well, you have to go over to their GitHub. Let's see if I can find their GitHub here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go back to home. I think I can get to the GitHub from here. All right, here it is down here, the GitHub, the little cat here. So here's their, their GitHub. So you're gonna to wanna to come over here and uh, probably uh, fork it first so that you're working on your own copy. But uh, you don't have to. You can come in here, you can grab this here. I use SSH because I hate typing in my password. Uh, you can use HTTPS. 
So just uh, copy the URL to your clipboard and then go back to your terminal. And in my case, it's the warp terminal. And I go to my code directory here. And you can do it from any directory you want. I just put all my code in the code directory so it's easy to find. And do a git clone. And you're going to want to paste in uh, whatever URL you copied over. And as I said, I'm using SSH, so the URL I'm using is correct for SSH. If you don't have SSH set up with GitHub, you should use the HTTPS uh, URL instead. So I don't need to do this because I've already done it. But if you hit enter there, a bunch of stuff is going to happen, and you're going to end up with a core directory, which you can CD into. And once you're in here, there is the Docker Compose YAML file. And if we go in there and edit that, you'll see that this is where all that stuff goes when we looked at that file. So you just copy the, you just delete whatever is in here and you copy this stuff in. Let's go back over here and take a look at it. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Here it is. Here it is here. So that's this guy. Just copy it. All of it. Every single bit of it. And paste it into here. And that's it. You don't have to make any edits to this. This is going to, uh, this stuff is commented out. But you'll see that we're going to have a container named Olama under cat, and it's going to be exposed on port 11.434. And all the rest of this stuff is, these are the volumes that are going to be created so that uh, you've got some permanent storage, etc. This is all Docker stuff. So if you don't know Docker, don't worry about it. It's going to work anyway. So when you're done, just get out of here. And then let's go back over here. And it says to run this, Docker Compose up. Well, I'm not going to do that because already, I've already done that. So Docker, Docker has come up. However, you can't work with it yet. Having done these two steps, it's not enough. So the first thing we have to do is we have to download the model that we want to use. And for that, we come over here and we grab this. And I set this up initially using Llama 2, and it was, it was, a, it was too slow. So uh, basically, you copy this, you come back down here, and you run it. And what this does is this is a Docker command. It does not execute this on your local machine. It executes this command within this command here. Alama pull mistral blah blah blah. It executes this inside of the Docker container named Olama under cat. And uh, this takes a while. This is going to take you, you know, five or ten minutes for that model to be pulled into the container. And it automatically starts serving that model. You don't have to do anything. Now you have a uh, you've got have a Docker container running, and it should tell you this at the bottom of the terminal. So this is your admin port. So you go to this HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 1865 slash admin, and what do you see? Well, when you get there, you see something like this. And you go into the settings here, and you go into the configure large language model, and you from this menu here, you choose Olama. And then you type in HTTP colon slash slash Olama under cat colon 11434. And then you also put in the name of the model here. This is the model that you pulled. 
and you say save. Now, one thing to be careful of here is when I did this, I put in Olama under chat, C-H-A-T. And so, of course, it gave me errors. And I think that this is a uh, mistake that a lot of people are going to make, and it's a very difficult mistake to catch. So just be aware that this says cat and not chat. Uh, anyway, save this. And once you've saved it, it'll tell you that this was updated. You can also go into the, your embedder, and it's using the dumb embedder, which is not very smart. Choose this quadrant fast embed local instead and save that. The reason we want this is because we want to be able to uh, process documents for question and answer. This takes a little while, but it works fine. We'll just have to wait for it. So what it's doing here is it's pulling down the model. We can actually take a look at this if we go over to our terminal. We can do a uh, docker compose logs minus f, and we can see what's happening. And over here, you see it's doing this embedder thing here. Uh, not very interesting to watch this. You have to control C to get out of this because it runs until you stop it. All right, so this embedder is done. Uh, we can go now over to home, and now we can ask questions. Uh, how do I use Olama? And this is going to take a while because it has to do the embedding, and then it has to send that through to Olama, and then Olama has to get the entire answer before it actually shows up on the screen. So one of the things I want to work on is to see how we can get uh, streaming turned on, if that's at all possible for this. We also have memory up here, and you'll see that we have some, some memory here already. We've got some episodic memory, and uh, let's see if there's a way to... We can take a look for this. Let's see. Oh, llama. It's going to actually look in here and it's going to see that we have this. Uh, what time is it up here? Down here we've got uh, query Olama. So, or, or Olam. They must have spelt it wrong. But uh, I, haven't pl I haven't played with this yet, but this is a way of looking at memories. And if you want to have the memories be permanent every time you turn this off and turn it back on, then uh, you have to actually go back into your terminal for that. And uh, I've got a file here called .env. And so what I've done here is I've set save memory under snapshots equal true. And so uh, this should make my memory permanent. Otherwise, when you do a docker compose down is that right? I think, I think we're supposed to have a uh, it's like that docker compose down uh, then you'll you'll lose your memories so I think that's something that you want to set right away is to make sure that they save these memories. Uh, I don't know what these other things are for here. This a quadrant server. Um, maybe maybe I need to turn these on at some point because we're using that quadrant embedding uh, model. Uh, maybe that's how we keep it around. Uh, so at the moment, I don't know how much stuff is permanent every time we turn it off and, and how much is around. 
I say this thing is still thinking. Uh, maybe when you, you're not on the screen, it stops. I don't know. But this does seem to be much, much too slow. Uh, so I'll have to see if there's some ways of speeding this up. I think this little guy up here changes the uh, to dark mode to light mode. And I don't know where, but I think I at one time I had a little thing over here for dropping documents. So I don't know, there may be some multiple versions or other things that can be changed. Maybe, maybe we have to go into the docs here. Oh, I see what that is. That's just the documentation. All right, well, I'm going to have to play with this. Uh, if we go back into the Chester Cat home and then go into the docs, you can do a lot of stuff in here. Also, from chesnacat.ai, there are a lot of interesting things in this blog that are worth looking at. And there's also a, a Discord channel for this, but I have not had any success uh, subscribing to it. I think that uh, whatever they've done to set that up is messed up. So uh, don't waste too much time trying to get in the Discord. Uh, at some point, I think that I may put something in the GitHub repository. Uh, if I go back to the uh, to the to their GitHub repository, there's issues. I may put something in there about the GitHub uh, about the uh, Discord server not working properly. Uh, and get a maybe try to get an invite that I can use from within my Discord application rather than the website. Uh, in any case, uh, this is, I think, a uh, better introduction to Chesser Cat than uh, you're going to get from an article uh, or any other video I've seen on it. So let me know what you think. Uh, have some fun with this, and thank you for watching.